G'day and welcome to the first of my 2022 What The Drivers Drove videos. This one of course we're going to be looking at what they drove to the first race of the year, the Bahrain GP. Straight up, I'm going to tell you, no driver drove that car on the thumbnail. However, that car was parked outside of the paddock for everyone to see. It is a pro drive and it's a road going version of a rally car that Sebastian Loeb drove. I can tell you that every driver that walked past that had a look. It was sensational. There are only 25 being made. They're a 1.25 million pound car. It's big, it's impressive and it's road legal certainly in Bahrain and maybe in other countries. Let's kick it off now with what the drivers drove. Max Verstappen, number one. He drove in in a Mercedes G-Class wagon, a G500 to be exact, a big boxy thing. Not particularly pleasant to drive, I was told by a couple of people. I've never driven in one. But this car is worth around 170,000 euros. Although I must say it's very hard to actually get a price on these things because there are so many different options that you can have on a car like this. Next up, Daniel Ricciardo. And there were three drivers driving this particular car. This is a Best Tune T77. If you've never heard of Best Tune, you're not on your own. Unless you're Chinese, because this is a Chinese car. Look, it looks flash. It's certainly colourful. Daniel's was yellow, and I'll go through the other two that we had uh, on offer at the last race. They're worth around 22,000 US dollars, so they're no big ticket item. And I did ask one driver what he thought of them, and he said uh, they've got lots of noises going off in the car, electronic beeps and sounds for all sorts of different things. But look, when I first saw it, I thought, is that a Tesla variant? Well, apart from Daniel, his teammate Lando here in the blue version, and this one was parked out the front of the hotel I was staying at, the Sofitel, where a number of the drivers stayed. But interestingly enough, both he and Daniel had their names on their sticker on the front window, which I thought was a little bit funny if you're trying to stay low key to have your name on there. I think they are the only two drivers that had their name. Oh no, Charles Leclerc has a CL written on his, which is handy for us because we're keeping tabs of who's driving what. Next up, Nicholas Latifi driving this Lexus LX570. This is a car worth around 100,000 euros. And I've seen uh, Nicholas a couple of times last year driving Lexuses. He has a liking for them, obviously. And these are, well, I'm pretty sure most of these are rental cars. A lot of them had Avis stickers and the like. Uh, maybe the Maseratis were lent to them, and I'll get to those. Well, let's do them now. We just mentioned them. Both of the uh, Ferrari drivers were driving Maserati Ghiblis. That's how you pronounce it. I looked it up this morning. A four-door car starts around 70,000 euros. Charles was driving the white one, and Carlos the grey one. Pierre Gasly was the third of the drivers, driving one of those best tuned from FAW Group in China. He landed a white version of it and would typically drive up close to the gates jump out and then his trainer Piru would park the car in the driver's car park which is probably a good 150 200 meter walk to the paddock and during those minutes it took to get from the car park to the paddock gates they were often besieged by autograph hunters and selfie seekers. Next up the second of the Red Bull drivers Sergio Perez and like his teammate was also driving a G-Wagon. This was slightly different. This was an AMG G63. This car actually started as a military vehicle and ended up as a civilian option. Oh, and they're pretty popular with celebrities and wannabes. They start just under 200,000 euros. Fernando Alonso, was he in something flash and crazy looking? No, very simple, a green Nissan Patrol. Up next, Lance Stroll with, without doubt, the cleanest car in the driver's car park. This was an Aston Martin, a DBX, beautiful paint job on this. I'm suggesting that Lance was having his washed every day because there's such a huge buildup of sand that collects on these cars. It's unavoidable if they're anywhere in the open. Now, Kevin Magnussen, the last minute call up for Haas was in a big SUV and he needed a big SUV because Without a doubt, he has the most number of trainers of any driver at the track. This race, he had four. So he needed all of that space in the Land Cruiser GXR to fit all those guys in. Was Yuki Tsunoda driving a four-wheel drive? No, he was not. He had a very simple Toyota Camry. Nothing special there, a suburban sort of vehicle, driven by perhaps many of you watching this. I loved Alex Albon's car. Look at this, a beautiful green, Land Rover Defender. 
These uh, run at about 40 to 45,000 pounds in the UK, and there is plenty of room inside a car like this. Who was driving this car, the Peugeot 508 GT? It was Zhou Guan Yu. These are worth around 26,000 pounds. Pretty simple sort of car, I thought. Nothing special. And uh, his teammate, Valtteri Bottas, was driving this Peugeot 2008. Nico Hulkenberg was a last minute call up, as you well know, so he got whatever he was given in the car stakes, because almost everything was gone by that stage, but he still ended up with a nice, clean, blue Mercedes sedan. Esteban Ocon, like his teammate Fernando, was driving a four-wheel drive, this time a Nissan Patrol. Now, this was the first car ever to be driven across Australia's Simpson Desert. And did you realize that this car was not available in the US because of safety concerns? and it didn't meet emission controls. There was no sand build up on Lewis Hamilton's car. He was driving a Mercedes GLE 53 AMG, a sporty, sexy looking car, and the exact same model was being driven by his teammate, George Russell, although George's car simply popped in that color. And our final driver of the 20 was Mick Schumacher, driving a Toyota GXR Land Cruiser, like Kevin Magnussen. <laughs> That's your 20 drivers, but I have some bonus sightings here. Mattia Bonotto in a Maserati Levante. Stefano Domenicali was in this Aston Martin and he had a driver. Fred Vasseur, well, he was going for something a little more basic, uh, a Jeep. Christian Horner driving his opposition's car, a Mercedes E200. Andreas Seidel also driving his opposition's car with a Mercedes GLB 200. McLaren Zach Brown was driving a GLC 200 Mercedes. And Franz Tost had a white Honda Accord. So there you have it, what the drivers drove to the Bahrain GP. If you're wondering whether a driver books direct with a car company or a team books direct, typically no. There is an agent that has that contract with Formula One and they go to each individual city and they work with different car providers to make sure that the drivers get what they want. So when I went to collect my car at the airport here in Jeddah yesterday, the agent was standing by and they had a whole lot of pre-filled out forms ready to go. Someone like an Alex Albon will roll up and they'll say, right, well, Alex, here, yeah, there you go. And they don't have to stand in line forever. Whereas we do because we book direct with the car rental company. If you've liked the video, click the like button please subscribe if you haven't done so and remember i have uh, coming up in melbourne a meet and greet on the wednesday prior to the event only for my youtube members so if you're not a member become a member and then come along to that function in melbourne i'll be doing others too later in the year you'll find all of my digital images at prostarpix.com you can get online to kimelman.com for f1 wall art merchandise and f1 photo books and for my best images live from the track and all during the week head across to instagram at kim illman thanks for watching and stay passionate lando was also driving one lanyol here lando